Um, again, my name is uh, Juan Rojas. Um, I'm a sales director with uh, V Digital Services Houston and uh, the Houston Press here um, in Houston, based in Houston as well. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about um, MOS, Marketing as a Service. And before I start, the, does anybody in here, is anybody in here familiar with this concept? I know I talked to a few ladies over here about it earlier, but has anybody heard of this idea before? Anybody? No? Okay, so a lot, everybody in here has heard of SaaS, right? Um, MOS is obviously not SaaS. MOS is a, uh, a, a basically an, an approach to, um, to marketing that um, companies like ours um, can offer to their clients. And it's, it's really a way of helping um, small to medium sized businesses to have a marketing department um, or for larger companies that have uh, marketing departments in place to have uh, an opportunity to uh, outsource a few, a few things that they may not be able to achieve on their own or that is taking up too much of their time, right? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how this all works um, uh, in, in the next uh, hour and um, I, I look forward to, to talking to you guys. Uh, you know, I, hope, I hope you guys have some questions and, and you know, just like Austin said, we'll, I'll be out there as well so we can talk later. Um, but let, let's just dive in. I have this up here just because I do want to talk a little bit um, about the progression of the company and why we're at the point where we are where we're talking about MOS. And this is a thing that we, um, that, that is a part of what we do, right? So um, I'm the, like I said, I'm the sales director for V Digital Services Houston. Um, I'm also sales director for the Houston Press. I've been with the company for 12 years. Uh, when I started with the company, it was um, the Houston Press, which is part of, of, of a larger company, but um, I started with the Houston Press and I was selling print and I was selling banner ads and some email blasts. And that was pretty much it, right? Um, over the years, we've come to the point where the, the V Digital Services side of the business is really my focus um, here in Houston. Um, on, through v, v Digital Services, this is where we're, we're doing uh, digital marketing uh, like SEO, SEM, um, social media, pretty much anything that you can think of within the digital space is stuff that we, is something that we offer. And the reason that we moved in that direction was because, as you all know, um, print is a little bit like an iceberg, right? It's kind of going away a little bit. It's never going to go away. But as that was happening, you know, we were also hearing from our clients that they were interested in talking to us about these services and they, you know, they had other vendors that were coming to them and saying, hey, um, the, this other company is talking to me about this and I want to I know your thoughts because I have a relationship with you. Um, you know, for example, Houston Press has been in Houston for 30 years. We have relationships, right? I have a relationship with you and I want to know what you think about this. And so we were able to develop our own um, team. Uh, v Digital Services was started, uh, uh, again, as a full service digital marketing agency. We do um, everything in house. And that is why we are at the point now where we're talking about MOS, because we've, come, we've, we've changed with the times to where now we're in a position to where we're talking about something completely different. Like I said, when I started, you know, my training was about print. Now we don't talk about print in Houston, right? So I'm going to go through a couple things here. Um, the customer journey, which I'm sure you guys are all aware of, but I just want to touch on it and, 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 and discuss it because it's kind of the frame of reference for everything that we're going to be discussing. Um, what is MOS? Some case studies of how this has worked in different types of companies. Um, and um, then I'll, I can take some questions if anybody um, would, would like to uh, pick my brain a little bit. Okay, so the customer journey. All right, so the customer journey the sales funnel, the purchasing funnel, right? It's got all different kinds of names. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, most of us in here have, are familiar with this concept, um, but just for the, the, the purposes of being thorough on this, you know, I do wanna go through it a little bit, right? So at the top, this is basically the process by which somebody becomes a customer, so by, by which somebody ends up purchasing your service or your product. And when you're looking at this, there's several stages that people have to go through before they get to the point when they're going to be making a purchase. So at the top, we have awareness. People who are not aware of, your, of what you do, they're not aware, they may not even be aware that your product or service is something that exists or that they need. 
So in that section, we have um, a few different things that you can do, including outdoor, um, including print, including radio, TV. I mean, these are all valid ways of reaching people in that space. Um, interest. Interest is where we start looking at uh, people who have shown interest. I mean, I think what, what Austin was saying, when somebody goes to your website, um, at that point, you can safely say that person is interested, right? I would say so. Um, but there's also way, other ways that people are, are expressing interest, and we can kind of figure out what those ways are, and there are ways for us to reach them. Um, if, for example, device ID, you know, reaching people who have been at a location and targeting them on their device. Um, social media, of course. Uh, email marketing is really effective in, in this space. Decision is when somebody has decided they're going to make that purchase. This is where SEO really comes into, pl into play. PPC comes into play, retargeting. Um, action, the customer is making that purchase. Again, at that point, when they've decided, it's not that they've decided that they want to make a purchase, it's that they decided they're going to make a purchase now. This is where it's crucial to be um, in that uh, SEO space and in, in, in on the first page of Google, essentially. Um, and then loyalty, which is having that customer come back. So. I want to touch on all this because this is kind of the framework for everything that a Moss company should be providing its customers. Um, this, is, this is the way that everything should be organized. And we all know in this room, I, I think oh, there are a lot of marketers in here, I, I hope. Um, but um, you know, it, it's, this is a really useful model to use, and we all know that it's kind of chaotic. I mean, there are. We, we do know that people go directly to action. If, you're, if you wake up in the morning and uh, the, your kitchen sink is, is leaking all over the kitchen, you're not in the awareness stage or the interest stage, you're immediately in action stage and you're calling a plumber right now. So that's a different situation from somebody that's like, I think I wanna buy a new TV. Let me look at some reviews. Let me look at um, a few different, let me look at Amazon and target. Let me look at a few different options and tr try to, to study. That's somebody that you can reach in all these other stages. So that's why the type of business that you're talking to, uh, that we are talking to as a Moss company, um, you know, we're going to have a completely different approach. So what is Moss? All right. So some of the things that you want to think of when you're talking about the customer journey, um, you know, just kind of overall goals, right? Um, I think uh, what Austin was saying was, was very relevant to this conversation because he was talking a lot about, you know, what are you going to do differently? How are you going to be frictionless? How are you going to give your customer uh, an experience that they're not going to forget, that they're going to want to relive, right? That's super important. What do, you wanna, what do you need to do to stand out, what do differently to stand out in the marketplace? That's super important once you get them there. It's also super important to get them there. And that can also be part of that experience. When you're nurturing them through that customer journey, through that funnel, it is part of the customer experience, that, the, uh, getting them to your website and then making that conversion, right? OK. So campaign goals. Now, I'm a big, big soccer fan. I come from South America. Um, and I grew up playing soccer. It's, I'm completely obsessed with it, and I always have been since I was a little kid, right? So is anybody else in here a soccer fan? Anybody? One, two, three, four. OK, four people. All right. Five? Oh, Brazil. OK, nice. So I, I, and even the people who, aren't, who don't like soccer, I think it's safe to say that um, you know who Lionel Messi is, right? So is there anybody in this room who has spent some time on YouTube? And maybe it's just me being a big nerd, but is there anybody else in here who has spent time on YouTube looking up videos of Lionel Messi goals with horrible techno music on top? <laughs> anybody? Few people, right? It's fun because his goals are really fun, right? Um, the goal is when you're watching a game, the goal is what you want. Like everybody's just waiting for that goal. You know, you're building up, you're building up, and then the goal comes and everybody explodes, right? And that's what you want when you're watching a game. So of course you want to go back and look at those goals again because like, man, Messi is amazing. How did he do that with his body? You know, how did he create that, that chance? How did he make that happen? 
And, and we should all be doing that. Everybody in this room, when you're done here, go watch some, some YouTube videos of Messi. But there's another type of video that you can watch on YouTube. Um, and it's a type of video that, that, I, uh, that I also love. So back in, the, in 2010, between 2010 and 2014, uh, Messi plays for Barcelona, right, in Spain. And they created a style of play that was um, really uh, uh, kind of, it kind of swept away all contenders, you know. It, they really just kind of dominated everybody. And that style of play was known as Tiki Taka. And so there's another type of video you can watch on YouTube that I highly recommend as well, where it shows the passing going on when there is no goal or where there might be a goal at the end. And in that passing, this is, that passing is what made that team the best team in the world and possibly in all of history, is that passing. That goal at the end that Messi did, amazing. But all that passing that he did in the back with the midfield, that's what created that. So when I think about KPIs, that's the way I'm thinking about it. When you talk to a business owner or you talk to, you know, your CEO or whatever, what's the KPI that they are always gonna throw out? If you say, well, well, you know, Mr. Business Owner, what's the KPI that's most important to you? Sales, sales, transactions, that's all I care about. And that's, they should, that should be something they care about. That absolutely is the final thing. That's the goal, you know? We get that goal, everybody explodes. Um, and so that's what, that's, that is something that we should be focused on. But what happened to all that passing? take the ball, pass the ball, take the ball, pass the ball, that led up to that goal. Those are these other KPIs. And that's why things like impressions are important. You know, I have had conversations. I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not so sure that I care about impressions. I only care about transactions. Okay. But those impressions lead to the transaction. So we need to have a plan to how we're going to get those. Right? And then everything else that you see here, these are all different things that we can track. But it depends on what the situation is, who we're talking to what their current needs are um, and, and what's going on, what kind of marketing that they're doing currently or not doing. All these things come into play for us to de develop a plan to say, okay, well, these are the KPIs that we should be paying attention to right now. And then, of course, that can change over time. So that's one of the things that I think is really important is that we need to be able to define what the, key, what the KPIs are before we move on with anything else. Okay, so the silo effect. I'm not gonna read all this, but um, essentially the silo effect is the process by which a marketer or a, um, a company says, well, we need, you know, we need to do something about our marketing. We need to have a plan. And that plan often ends up being, okay, well, I'm gonna use this vendor to do my email marketing. I'm gonna use this other vendor to do my Google ads, or I'm gonna do my Google ads in-house. I'm gonna use this other vendor to do this other thing. Because they know that they need to take care of all these different avenues. It's something that they know is important. But what ends up happening is you have either a team whose uh, focus has been dispersed in many different directions, or you're working with several different companies who are not talking to each other that are working on your campaign and working on your marketing. Well, that lack of communication, that ends up with, with what you see here, siloing. That SEO company is working independently from the paid media company. They're not talking to each other. The social media company is not talking to the SEO company. Or if they are, they may be trying to steal each other's business, <laughs> right? Um, which is also something that happens, as, as you well know. So when we, when we uh, uh, look at it like this, you know, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we set it up to where this isn't happening. And one of the ways that we can do that is by using um, our in-house capabilities. So we have in-house capabilities on everything that we do, and that's kind of the, what, the way that you should look at how a MOS company should operate. A MOS company, company should be able to do everything in-house without outsourcing. 
And that's a, a huge benefit because now you have a team that's working on a full campaign. Different sub teams are working within that company, but they all are working together and they all communicate. And so that's the way that we want to frame this. So Moss. So one of the things, one of the big things about this concept and why we're making, why we're doing this concept, why, we're, why I'm here talking to you guys about it, is we want to break that paradigm, you know, kind of kill that idea, not kill the idea, but, you know, rethink the idea that you need a platform. If I just had a, this platform, everything's going to be okay, right? Um, and you often hear that, you know, hey, I have this platform, I have this, uh, this software. It's going to solve all your problems. I mean, they may, not even, they may not say that, but one of the things about a platform, a platform is a solution to a specific problem, right? And that solution to a specific problem is just that. It's a solution to that problem. And then you get a dashboard where you can track your progress as you have fixed that problem. And that's beneficial. That's good. Um, I think that that's, uh, uh, you know, something that, you know, generally people want to do. What we're saying is you don't need to say, oh, well, I just need to, if I could only have this solution, then I would be all right. We're saying, okay, there is, there are uh, dozens or hundreds of factors out there that are affecting what's going on with your business right now. How is that one, how is that platform, how is that one solution How's that going to fix? How's that going to help you address all that stuff? It's not. It's one piece of the puzzle. So when we're looking at a campaign, we're thinking about what are all the pieces of the puzzle? How is that platform going to work with this other platform? Are they, are they working together or are they at odds? Um, what, are these different, what are these different platforms um, purposes and you know, how can we make everything work together a little bit better? right? Um, and then coming to our clients with an idea of how they should do that. All right. So again, uh, in-house personnel is allowed to focus on other things. That's another, that's another big part of it. Um, you know, if you're talking about a company that only has a couple of employees, say less than 10, you know in that company everybody's being pulled in 50 different directions, right? That means that if, you know, uh, uh, Betty over here, you know, the CEO has told her, Betty, I need you to just handle marketing. Well, Betty's probably also doing payroll. She's probably also um, the HR person, just kind of by default. You know, there's lots of things that she's doing. She's probably not focused on marketing very much. In a big company, it's a little bit different. You do have a full marketing team, but oftentimes those marketing teams are being tasked with, you know, we need you to work on this project. And then there are other things that need upkeep constantly that are being ignored or being neglected. And that's a very common issue, right? As I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of us in here would agree with that. It's a very common issue. And uh, to continue my soccer analogy, there's a, when you think about, this is the way that I think about this. When you think about, um, uh, you know, kids playing soccer, I know a lot of you may have children who like play, you know, s soccer in the, you know, soccer, uh, what's it called? The, um, I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, the, like basically little leagues. When you watch little kids play soccer, they're all running towards the ball, right? Have you guys seen this? All those kids are running towards the ball all at the same time. And that's a little bit like how things are going to work in, uh, in a lot of situations when you don't have your plans properly in place, right? Everybody wants the marketing to work. Everybody wants um, leads to come in. Everybody wants web traffic to come in. And everybody's trying as hard as they can to make that happen. That's not the issue. It's people are working hard. Absolutely. That's not the problem. The problem is that they're going at it with no plan. And that's the difference when you watch that video that I told you about of the, um, the passing. You see that these guys have a very specific plan. Everybody knows exactly where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. And as soon as they have the ball, what they're supposed to do with it. Take the ball, pass the ball, take the ball, pass the ball, right? 
So they know that they're supposed to, they know exactly what they're supposed to do in any given moment, and they execute that. It's really different from a bunch of kids running after the, the ball. But with the same, they all have the same goal. They want to score a goal, right? They want that transaction. So that's kind of the way that to, to think about this kind of thing. All right. So Moss companies help develop strategies for marketing, create relevant content, and execute the campaign over multiple media platforms, such as digital and print. While the business maintains control over the project, the Moss company handles details and execution. This frees up your team members to work on other matters. So it's kind of just you know, a little recap of what I just said. Um, but uh, it, I, I hope this gives you a sense of why we are going, we are, 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 are running with the Moss concept. Because I think, I think it really is a different concept from many, from other companies that are out there. I know there are, there are other mo companies that are doing Moss, um, but nobody's really calling it that yet. It's kind of catching up. It's a, it's a little bit out there. Okay, so, but what does a, a marketing as, as a service company do? Um, this is a sample. These are a few things that a, a Moss company can do. Um, there are many, many other things that a Moss company could do, including um, media buying uh, for outdoor, for TV, for radio. I mean, that all plays, plays a part, right? The digital space is where we focus. Everybody in this room, I think, is focused on the digital space. But when you look at the funnel and you look at the purchasing, the customer journey, then you can really see how everything works together. And so some of those traditional print, TV, all that stuff, those play a, those play a part. We shouldn't neglect those. Um, but uh, at the same time, with digital, you can track, right? You can track clicks, you can track conversions, you can track all kinds of different things. And so you really want, again, everything to be working together. So I have a couple case studies here um, that I'd like to discuss. Uh, I chose a couple of, of companies that we've worked with that um, uh, are, we've ha we have a very good relationship with, and I chose them because they're really, really different. So one of the things um, about a company like ours is we don't specialize in you know, one type of company. We have focused over the years on the SMBs, but we do enterprise, of course. We do everything in between, right? Um, we, as, as a company, since we started, like I started, like I said, in print with the Houston Press, the Houston Press um, print edition was really focused in a lot of ways on food, on restaurants. So restaurants are really, really strong with us, even today. Really strong. And at the same, but at the same time, we have other types of companies. We have medical, we have um, home services, we have all different kinds of things going on at any given time. And so the reason that I chose these two is because it kind of shows you the different industries, but also different um, situations that each one of these companies were in, so that you can see how a, what we do can help each one of them individually for their particular purpose, their particular problem in that particular moment. And how things changed over time. So the first one that I have here, it's a landscape design firm. Um, it's actually in, in Austin, Texas. This, this is a landscape design firm. Uh, so this is as opposed to a landscape firm, a landscapers, a landscaper, right? This is a company that will come to your house and turn your backyard into a fantasy land, right? That's kind of what they do. Um, so it's very expensive. You know, when we first started talking to them, they'd been around for about nine years. They had three full-time employees. Everything else was contractors. Uh, but they had three full-time employees working for them. Their average deal size was 15000 so they, would, they didn't want to talk to you unless you had $15,000 to spend on the project. Um, but they would do seven, at least $7,000. That was the minimum, right? They were getting two to three leads per week from their website. They had um, a guy that was running uh, social media for them and a little bit of Google Ads. It wasn't really, nothing was really happening, 
but they just felt like they had to do it. One of the great things about this company is that the, the owner um, really believes in marketing. Like she really believes in marketing. It's really important to her. And so she knew that it was something that she had to do. And it wasn't really working out with this guy. So when we started talking to them, you know, we started developing, okay, well, what exactly are they doing? And you can see over there on the, on the, the funnel that I have up here. They were doing some community newspapers. They were in some magazines. It was kind of like one-offs, you know. Uh, I'm going to call you and say, hey, we have our summer guide coming up. Do you want to be in it to let people know, you know, that they can have you come out and look at their, their garden and fix it for them or whatever. Um, so a few magazines, some high-end uh, glossies, that kind of thing, local magazines. In the interest section, they were doing some Facebook ads. There was nothing in decision, nothing in that space, so they weren't really focused on that at all. Um, and then in action, they, uh, you know, are, were on review sites, the, you know, Yelps and Angie's List and all that kind of thing, right? So they were working with those companies. And things were going fine, right? Now, what they wanted to do was really increase because as, although things were going well, they were like, man, those lands that landscape design from over there, they charge way more than us. They get way more business. They, not only do they charge more than us, they get more leads than us. And I know that we do a better job than they do. So what, what are we supposed to do? Like there's so much business out there um, and, and we're not getting any of it. And the, what we are getting is not what those guys are getting. So what are, what's, what's our solution? So we came to them and we put together this plan. And this is what they started with. So they had a limited budget. Um, and they, they just kind of wanted to test it out. Because as I say, they, they'd been burned before, right? So I totally understand that. You know, I'll work with you. What we did was we took a look at their media mix and said, this is what we think that you should do. Now, whatever budget you give me, I'm going to try to allocate it to where we're covering all parts of this funnel. And what we came together, uh, what we put together for them, in awareness, we were going to do some digital display, uh, mo mostly through Google Display Network. Um, with an interest, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, more targeted than what they were doing before. The ads they were doing before were just really basic, like just, I'm, just, I'm doing an ad, right, um, in Austin. That's not what we did. We, we, we really drilled down to find the, um, the geographical areas and um, the, the incomes of those people that they needed to get in front of because, again, you have to have money to be able to work with these guys. Um, and so they, one of the problems that they were having before is they were getting tons of calls every week from people saying, hey, I need you to mow my lawn. How much is it? They don't do that, right? They're like, oh, well, it, it, they got so many calls, it was just a waste of time. So decision, Google Ads and local SEO. So local SEO is optimizing for their Google My Business page, not for their website. I think it's, that's, a, that's an important distinction. And the reason we did that, partly because of budget, partly because the local SEO space for home services is really the Google Maps results, that's, that's, where, that's where you get most of the, most of the action in that, for that, those industries. Um, and so we really wanted to focus on that space first and then move on from there. Um, then in action, of course, same thing, ads, S uh, Google ads, local SEO, retargeting, um, tracking their ROI for them, and then, you know, said, okay, of course, continue working with your review sites. Uh, I think that's huge for you, for them. I mean, their, their reviews are, are really good, their reputation is very good, and so uh, it just makes sense, right? That's another, that's another thing that I just want to throw in there. I'm never going to come to you, I'm never going to come to uh, one of my customers and say, um, I, I don't think you should spend money um, on TV. You should, you should pull back, back that budget and give it to me if it's working. Why would I do that? That's insane, right? If they're spending, if they're spending money on TV and it's working along with this, then that's, that's good. It helps the campaign that I'm running for them and it helps the other campaign that they're running. So. They continue to work with those sites and they continue to work with those sites to this day. So we put this together with them um, and we launched it in November of 2017. So they started talking to us in uh, about July, something like that. And then in October, we kind of drilled down and in November we got started. 
So this is what ended up happening. So this is through last month. Um, they saw a 231% increase in impressions from their campaign on, on, uh, for their Google ad campaign in that time. 330% increase in clicks, 57% decrease in cost per conversion. They're getting about 10 to 20 leads per week on their website. Um, average deal size is now 44,000. It's 20,000 minimum per job. They don't want to talk to you unless you have that. And they're consistently booking jobs at $100,000. They've hired up. They're going to hire some more. Um, you know, some of the, the, the positions that they've hired for are for designing, right? So it was the owner, the CEO and owner, she was doing all the design work herself, as well as maintaining the, the you know, going to the sites and making sure that it was being done properly, um, as well as uh, the, she was doing the marketing herself. She used to answer, she still mostly answers every phone call, right? So she was doing a lot. Um, now they have designers on staff that they can, they can give that, uh, those jobs to. Um, so it really frees up her time to do other things. And right now they're currently working on a, uh, developing a new site in order to increase conversion rate. And I think one of the really interesting things about that last bullet, working on a, on a new website, is that we were able to use the information that we'd gleaned, that we'd gathered from all this other stuff that we were doing to make recommendations on how their new website should be set up. Because before they had no idea. You know, they had a website built. They were like, we need a services page. We need a about us page. We need a testimonials page. Done, right? But what we, were, what we were able to do is say, look, on your Google Ads campaign, we can actually see that a lot of the traffic that you're getting is for these things. And so they were able to build out really solid landing pages for those particular items where they're getting the most play on Google. Um, that, that's going to help decrease that cost per conversion even more. So that's um, another thing, another way that we were able to help them. That website's not completed. It's still being worked on, but should be live soon, and then we'll see what happens. But this is a really good example of a very small company who does a lot of revenue, but a very small company in terms of people um, who really just needed help getting something like this put together. Um, they knew they had to do it, and they were trying to do it, but they didn't get into the business, into this business, to become marketers. They hired marketers, right? And it has really worked out. So that's one example. I really like this example because it is a small company and because of the industry that they're in. This next example, it's a very, very different type of company. This is a multi-location fast casual restaurant. Um, they have 11 locations. Um, it's been around since the mid 90s. So it's a very well known brand, especially among Latinos. Um, and they do very, very well. They've done very, very well. Now in our time, in my time at the Houston Press specifically, they had done some stuff with us here and there, like little things. Um, but I came to them with uh, this, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the ideas about how we could help them um, with their marketing plans, um, and was able to talk to their um, their marketing director. And that's, you know, another thing to think about here is that they're a well-established brand. They're really well known, very popular, do very well, and they have a solid marketing team in place. This is a completely different scenario from the last one that we saw. This is a marketing team of professional marketers that are there that are working for them full time. And in conversations with her, you know, came to find out they're going to be opening two new locations in the next few months. And they really want those two new locations are in an Anglo area. There's not as many Latinos there as, as, as in the other areas where they are. And so they were a little concerned about that. Because all of their collateral, all of their signs, everything, all their menus, it's all in Spanish, right? With English on there, too. But, you know, the slogan is in Spanish. Uh, there's all kinds of issues that gave them, gave them pause. And so there was uh, uh, some trepidation there. What they were doing, and they were doing well, again, 
doing a ton of billboards. They were on, ooh, looks like something happened here. Huh, that's all right. Yeah, so they were on a ton of billboards all over, um, all over Texas. Um, they did taxi ads, so ads on the back of taxis, something that they really believe in. Um, they were doing print, um, and, you know, big ads in, in magazines and, and newspapers. And um, they were doing uh, some, I, I believe they were, hand, they were handling their local SEO in-house. That was one thing. That was actually one of the reasons that I started talking to them, because they were having such a hard time managing their Google My Business um, listings um, and dealing with Google themselves um, that that was a big sore point for them. So I was able to talk to them, you know, we're a Google Premier Partner, we can help you through some of these issues, which we did. Um, and so that's where we were. They were doing a little bit of so, uh, digital display and of course they were managing their social media in-house as well and they were, doing, they were doing a good job at that too. So, this is what we proposed to them. Keep doing your billboards. Keep doing the ads on the taxis. Keep doing print. Let's add some digital display up there, some targeted digital display. Um, in the areas where they were already with the Latino populations, the ads were in Spanish and the ads were targeted to Spanish speakers. Um, in the other areas, the Anglo areas, um, they were not. They were in English. The message was completely different, and they were targeted to um, uh, English speakers for the uh, for the most part. I mean, it, those areas are very little Latinos. But um, then we said, okay, let's add some some interest. Now we moved. We're moving a lot of that focus on just awareness down to interest and decision. Let's do some more digital display, a little bit more targeted device ID, targeting people who have been to their competitors. So if you've been into in, uh, one of their competitors' uh, locations in the past six months, then we can target your device with ads saying, you know, come on over to this place um, and be able to show them how many of those people actually ended up in the store. Email marketing, social management, which they were already doing, go ahead and come continue to do that. We took over their, their Google My Business listings um, and began optimizing each of those. And then we also started doing organic SEO for um, one of their websites. They have a couple websites. Um, so one aspect to keep in mind here too is that with 11 locations, you often have 11 different um, goals. You know, this location on the north side of Houston is not going to have the same goals as a location in McAllen. It's completely different areas. The, manager, the, the general manager has different things that he wants to do. So not everybody was, was the same. Um, so we had to launch several different campaigns. A few of the, the, the areas they needed to hire. So hiring is great because you can run a campaign for hiring and at the same time it's a branding campaign. So that actually worked out really well at, to double up with a grand opening. So we were able to do a grand opening campaign and a hiring campaign and then it was like they doubled up on that grand opening because they also saw all the hiring ads. Um, and then seasonal stuff, you know, holiday reservations, crawfish was big, um, uh, anything along those lines, uh, the uh, uh, Lent, Lent is big, because um, it is a, a, a seafood, a seafood uh, destination. So there was a lot there to work on, um, there was a lot to do, and once we started working on their campaign, you know, some of the things that you saw, we took a lot of that burden off of the current marketing team for them to do completely different things. This is a big deal, right? One of the, one of the, the points of conversation I have with the, my point of contact here is, hey, if we're going to do this other thing that you're talking to me about, is that going to take up any of my time? And it's always like, no, no, that's why you're hiring us to do it, you know? But she, she just feels like that all the time because that's happened to her in the past. But that's the point of what we do, is we're gonna take that away from you so that you can work on other things. All right, so for the Google My Business views, compared to the baseline, and this is across all 11 locations, on average, we saw a 424% increase in the amount of times their listing was seen on Google. Um, a 484% increase on average in clicks from Google My Business for directions compared to baseline. Of course, that number right there for a restaurant 
that's one of the main things that they, that they care about. How many people click for directions? You can kind of take it to the bank that for about 85% of those people actually came to your location. Now they can see, hey, last year, this time, and this year, we look at, we look at the numbers, we can see that we increased this much, we know about 85% of those people showed up, now we can really calculate what kind of, what, how effective this, this money spent has been. They had two successful openings in these predominantly Anglo markets. Those are still going strong. Um, it's worked out very well for them. Um, for the one website that we're working on for them, there's been a 1,200% increase in organic traffic to that website in that time. Obviously, that's a huge number. <laughs> so grain of salt, they had a very, very low traffic in the beginning to this website. Right. Uh, and then we also built out location pages and retooled the menu on their website um, for the restaurants. So that was uh, um, also related to the local SEO campaign, right? Because if you have uh, more than one location, you're going to want to have individual location pages for each one of those locations on your website so that Google can see that name, address, and phone number specifically on, it, on its own homepage. So it's been very successful. They're, 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 they're very pleased with us. And again, this is an example of uh, a company that is really, really different from that last one. And their goals were different. Their way of, their way of doing things was different. Um, so not, neither one of these, well, yeah, neither, neither one of these really fit into that model of um, you know, all the kids running toward the ball. It wasn't that bad. But they did need to tighten up a bit and get drilled on what are the things that they should be doing and how we can do those things for them. So, uh, again, when you look at a Moss company, the idea of the platform that's gonna, that is going to change your business Platforms do change businesses. Platforms are important. I'm not saying that they're not. But there's a difference between, you know, me, me coming to you in the old days and saying, hey, you should buy a print ad. Now I'm coming to you and saying, hey, what do you want to achieve? I have different ways that we can help you achieve that. That's the difference between a Moss company and another company that's trying to sell a product. I don't have a product. I have a service that will help you in your overall marketing efforts. That's what Moss is. So I know we set aside, we got to start a little early. Um, and you know, I want to take some questions if anybody has them. We just have a couple of examples here again of how this could work. I think I've, I've kind of covered it you know, in, our, in our talk. Um, but yeah, does anybody have any questions or any thoughts? on anything that we've talked about here today. Nobody? All right. Well, like uh, Austin said, I will be here. Um, so we'll be able to talk if you guys do have questions. Uh, and I look forward to meeting some of you guys. Thank you. Thank you.